Hey everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today I'm going to show you how I've made this lovely witch's handbag and it's using inspiration from my bags book that I've shared. I've got a handbag playlist using that bags book and that's up there so you can check that out if you want some more inspiration and other ideas for different styles. But this one's very cute. You've got your hook and loop closure there, lots of space inside to pop all your treats and then the front of it looks like the witch's clothing, her outfit. But you don't have to decorate it like this you just have lovely pattern papers and it can be for any occasion you like so let's get started so to make the gift bag you're going to want two pieces of ten and a quarter by eight and a quarter and you're going to score both pieces the same way so you're going to score at two and three quarters and nine and three quarters along the long side and then rotate it so the half inch tab is at the top and score at five and a half and then rotate it back again so that half inch tab is on the right hand side and you want to score at one and three eighths down to about four four and a quarter it's just going to help you squash the sides in so you want to do that on both pieces then for the closure you want a piece that's seven inches wide but the length of it i am going to be trimming this down but i've kept it as long as my a4 width at the minute until i you know can see how much i need to cut into it because everybody's is going to be different but you will want to score at half an inch so next you want to fold and burnish all the score lines okay and then i'll show you how to cut this one and then you'll cut the other one exactly the same way so first of all you want to have it so your half inch tab is on your right hand side and you're going to cut up this score line here and and just cut it up to the first score line and just remove that corner then you want to cut up this one like so and just take a wedge off of the corners here the sides okay and then just take a little wedge off of that one and also that one there so just repeat that on the other one. With this score line here, just create a valley fold. Just kind of pinch it down like so. You'll see it's just going to help the sides come in. And next, we're going to attach these together. So you're going to add glue to your tab here and stick it onto the other one like so. I'm just using my construction glue. Just run that all the way down. And then just lay this down, but always focus on your base score line. Get that lined up. Because if you're out at the top, which for some reason I am, can you see this is higher? Obviously it didn't concentrate very well. So I can trim that very easily. Whereas if you were to line up the top, it would be, you just have a wonky, wobbly gift bag. So I'm just going to let that dry and then I will trim that piece off the top. So now you want to stick this piece on. So fold it over now so you have this whole panel and just the half inch um, tab there. And again, just run your glue down and then just fold that side over yeah it's all lining up now again just give that all a minute to dry so now you should be able to squeeze in the sides there so that's the top of the bag and now with the bottom you want to decide which is your front and back so i'm going to have this one as the front and i'm going to fold the back down first and then i'm going to add some glue Oops, still drying a bit there just hold that add my glue all over that one stick that down and again all on the side there oh i didn't cut the um so this is what happens again i'll just show you this is why we cut a little wedge off of the side pieces i forgot to on this one and can you see it kind of overhangs so that's why we just trim into them so i'll, I'll leave this bit in but i'm just going to if you ever forget like i have now it's still easy to trim off the edges there see now you don't get any of that overhang and i'm just going to add my glue all onto this this is the construction glue so it's going to make it nice and strong so i'll be able to put heavier stuff in here but if you are putting something with considerable weight to it then you could always add a layer of grey board in between this or just a few extra layers of a heavy weight card stock but you can see now how nice and neat that is on the bottom flip it over and i'm just going to use my ruler and i can just go in there now and spread that all out 
so this is now all ready for us to attach the lid but first of all you want to decide how long you want this to be so the tab is going to connect to the back so just pretend that's kind of in place i want to have a nice curve i want to have a bit of an arch on the side there and my idea is to have the collar come down about halfway but i want to add a curve into that so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to attach it first then i can give you the measurement because i need this to kind of stay in place so that i can get a real idea so i'm going to lay this down right up to the score line there i just bring this up slightly you can see there okay so it's just right up to the score line and just give that some time to dry okay so that's all connected so now when i bring it over i want there to be i mean to be honest the arch is entirely up to you but it's gonna be about there i think and then if i go about halfway down if you just want to cut yours to be of a similar you know style to mine then from the very end there you're looking at five and three quarters with that half inch score line there but i've got a little marker there and i'm just going to do another little marker at five and three quarters so i'm just using my nail there use a pencil if you want to be a bit more professional <laughs> there we go and i've got these oval dies here again it can be any shape you want you want something if you're going to do it similar to me that's going to almost map you know meet the the width of your card here but, and i want to bring down the bottom here so it's kind of in line with that five and a half but i'm going to flip this over there you go i can still see my little markers there and then it's easier for me to work so now i can just get the oval nice and straight bring this down to reach the bottom there so about there and then i'm just going to take my pencil and just draw around that there so there you go you can see my oval shape so now i'm going to cut that out Just come in from the side to join it out of there. Okay. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now when I bring this over, that is going to act as the collar. And I can decorate that further in a moment. So I've just used this embossing folder. It must have been free in a magazine, but I quite liked the design. And I've cut myself some little some little faux pockets. And these are two by one and three quarters. You want to cut two of them. And they're going to go about there and then to go on the top to act like the little like fold over detail I guess this is half an inch by I've done two and a quarter but I think I'm going to do two and one eighth because I think it's a bit too much overhanging I just want it to just overhang a little bit and then I'm going to have a button on the top so these are the witch's little pockets or whatever character you want it to be so I'm going to add a little bit of foam three of them along the top there and then like I said I think I just want to have a little bit overhanging I'm going to line it up with the top and just have a little bit I should have used my black foam pads actually thinking about it and then I'm just going to snip it so there's just a little overhang there so cut them to two and one eighth rather than two and a quarter if you want it like me I'm just going to just going to push that under a bit and then if you've got something like this where you would rather your foam pads to be hidden not really seen if you've got a black pen or a fine liner you can just color the top and it will just disguise it or you use your black foam pads like i said i just forgot there you go that's completely disguised them so i'm just going to do the same with this one okay i'm just going to add some foam to attach my buttons for the minute but i'll probably end up using hot glue that might hold it okay so these are going to go down here now i am thinking about adding another piece of embossed um purple not only will it reinforce this card but it could also add a nice texture or maybe i use this one here which is from my new premium foiled card pack let's just see because then this could act as like the top and then that would be, let's just have it down here. And we're going to have green and black trim around there. 
yeah I think that will work actually so I'm going to cut this piece down to five and a quarter by six and three quarters okay so I'm happy with that I've then also cut this piece which is one inch by five and a half so it's the height of the um, bag here I think I'm actually going to cut it down though because I'd like it to start from the pattern paper so I'm going to trim that down to five and a quarter I think it would be yeah I'm going to stick this one right down in the middle and then I'm going to stick these either side but I think again I'm going to add some foam to the backs of them just so they're a bit more 3D So next I want to create a black trim all the way around here. So I've taken this piece of black cardstock seven inches wide. Again, I've kept the height enough for me to be able to trim and fix it onto that. And I've just gone around that same die again. And maybe I'm being a bit ambitious, but what I want to try and do is cut around this piece, but then cut down into it with the same one inch border or width that I've done for this piece here. So we will see how it goes. So first of all, I'm going to, did I manage? Oh, I don't think I, my pencil must have not um, touched the card there. Let's just start again. So make sure that's, I'm gonna come up a bit more and start again there. So push your die down, make sure it's nice and, because ovals, it's easy to make an oval wonky. Circles are easier. Okay, that's better. So I'm going to cut this all out first. Okay, so that fits over the top of that perfectly. Now I'm going to along the top here, because I can still trim off this end, but I'm going to mark six, well, one inch and six inches. And I'm just going to just sketch around until I've got the frame that I'm happy with. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go with that. Okay, so I've just rubbed out any pencil marks, but now that should sit perfectly over the top. And now when I bring it round, we get that cool effect. And then once I've added two buttons here and I'm going to add another button there as well oh I love it now I'm thinking and then I think I'm going to have my sentiment there we've got the handle and stuff to add yet okay so I needed to order some hook and loop so it's now another day and I've received these I got them from Amazon and I thought you know I'm just going to get a ton of them because I know they're going to last me I've gone for similar ones that I used to get from Dot and Dab, which was by Trimcraft at the time, but I haven't actually found them for a while. So you've got your, the hooks and then the loops. So that's the softer side. I can't remember how many are in here. You don't have to have as many as this. I think you can order a smaller quantity, but for someone who does use this kind of thing a lot, it just worked out cheaper for me to get this many so I'm just going to take one of each pop them together this would be a test to see just how sticky they are because you can get some that aren't they aren't very good but these feel very very sticky sticky um so I want it to be what I'm going to do actually is stick it behind here and then I can line up the sides I think my Maybe my button's not centered, so I might need to move my button over. So I just want to get that to tack onto the other side. Carefully prise it apart so that it's stuck on both sides. Sometimes it's easiest to use some tweezers. Right, that's in the position it needs to be. And now I can really push that down. So it's a bit fiddly to get it into place. And again, you can really push that down now. 
you can use magnets if you want but now that holds that perfectly okay so now i'm just going to add this ribbon that i found what i've decided to do is if you're not going to use eyelets then punch a hole right in the middle of your fold there and you'll be able to thread your ribbon through because i'm using the eyelets if i use them on that fold they're just going to kind of lift and probably end up tearing the card so i don't want to do that but it is optional i know i'll probably end up putting it's got a bit of weight inside here so the eyelets are just going to ensure my card doesn't rip so i've done one on the back panel on this side and then I've punched this one on the front panel just so it balances out when I'm carrying the bag. Now I want to make a feature of the ends so I'm just tying a couple of knots so it's not going to come back through. So I've got a nice big knot there so that won't come through there and then I want to fray all of this. Now I may well just be able to pull, now I think if I cut it back down closer just thought it would tie in quite well with the Halloween theme and then I'm just going to yeah try and fray this all up okay I thought I'd just bring the book back in again so you can see how pretty close we are to this obviously I've changed mine's more of a square shape this is more of a rectangle but it's more it was more about the decoration um I think this has come together really nicely but I'm now going to add the trick or treat I think on the front there I just think it looks really nice. I'm hoping to get some Halloween charms. I'm going to have a little shop online and see if I can get some nice little charms and stuff. So I don't have any Halloween theme. And I think it'd be quite nice to maybe have a few hanging from here. But this one here is from the... So it's the topper sheet with the witch and the ghost on, the trick or treat. So I've just popped it up on some white card just so it's framed a bit better. And I'm going to add a bit of foam to the back. And then what I might do, just because that little fold is bugging me, in the ephemera pack, there's some spiders. So I might use, hmm, that looks quite good. Or oh, the bat, actually, that could work quite nicely. Oh, yeah, I like the bat. Let's just have a little look. Let's just pop that back on. Once there's something inside, you'll be able to push your Velcro down more. I'm just going to add a bit of shape to this, but I think having a little, let's have a look, a little flying bat up there. Yeah, I like that a lot. I might actually see if I can do a few others. So, you know, this is all optional now, all these extra bits. Um, but I do want to do a couple of trick-or-treat bags. So I think this is going to be perfect. Yeah, I love that. And then let's see, we've got... We've got the spider there. See a little spider kind of coming down, maybe coming down from the pocket there. Yeah, I like that. There we go. Oh yeah, and you can see the little fluffy tassels there as well. But I think a little charm on the sides will finish it off just nicely. But I'm going to stop there. I'm really pleased with that. So I hope you've enjoyed this fun gift bag from me today. It's a really fun style and it's an easy one for you to be able to change for many occasions as well. So it doesn't have to be for Halloween as I've done. If you want to look at all of the other bags that I've made from this book, I have a handbags playlist and that will come up here if I haven't already shared it at the beginning. And I'll have some more handbag style gift bags coming up now. You might want to go and watch one of those next. If you've enjoyed today, please give me a thumbs up and I'll be back again very soon. Take care. Bye.